Greetings from the Center Point United Methodist Church. I am Pastor Mike Elson, and we are coming from Center Point, Iowa, in the middle of town, to bring you some good news today. Pastor Andrew is here to give us a sermon, and I'm Pastor Mike Elson. We welcome you here today on this live feed for the first time, and we are excited, excited that you are joining us today. So we ask you just to get your Bibles or your electronic devices, and later on as Pastor Andrew brings the message, we'll be reading scripture and from the Gospel of John chapter 11, and I'm real excited to hear his message about hope and, and um, uh, in the in the times we're living in with this coronavirus. So uh, thank you again for being here. And I just want to tell you that the church has been sending updates. We'll continue to send updates. That's what our announcement's going to be uh, through email, uh, Facebook, and social media. So please uh, continue to look at those platforms uh, for continuing updates. Our fly program is doing very well. We anticipate that uh, the numbers have gone up all last week. They're going to continue to go up. We thank you for the volunteers that are uh, working so diligently and, and hard in getting that, that program out and providing meals to our, our uh, families uh, and children that aren't in school and providing that. I want to yell a shout out to the uh, Center Point Urbana School System and all the Center Point uh, businesses. We thank you for your support through that and our partnership with each other. It is, it's a community effort that comes together to take care of a community, and we thank you for that. Uh, as we move along, uh, we have a microphone here and we got several elements. We're going to be switching the microphone and making adjustments as we go. So I just want you to know that. Just bear with us and we will continue on uh, with our live uh, feed of our service this morning. I also want to let you know that we'll be uh, posting this in an email later on today with a site uh, that you can click on and go and see it as well if you have friends or relatives or if you're watching this and you haven't been able to uh, um, see it yet you can go to that um, email and find the site in which we'll be emailing out to you so with that uh, I thank you for being here and we are going to turn it over now to our children's time. Brenda Weiss and Jed Weiss are here with us today. And they're going to do a little children's program. So kids, get closer to the screen because this is for you. Today I'm telling a story from the Bible about Jesus and his friends. And his friends were siblings. They were Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. And this is about how Jesus brought them comfort during a really tough tragedy. And so much more. One day, Lazarus complained to his sisters, Mary, Martha, I feel awful. My head hurts, my stomach hurts, even my beard hurts. I'll fix you some tea, said Martha. But when she offered it to him, Lazarus just groaned. Oh! I'll ask our neighbor Bill to find Jesus, said Mary. He'll know what to do. So Bill saddled his cow and rode away. He found Jesus in a distant village. Your friend Lazarus is very sick, said Bill. Please come quickly. Jesus smiled. Don't worry, my friend, he answered. Lazarus will be fine, you'll see. A couple of days later, Jesus said to his disciples, Let's take a trip to Judea and see Lazarus. But Jesus, said Peter, the last time we were there, people tried to kill you. Remember the servant of that Roman soldier, asked John. You healed him without even seeing him. Why can't you heal Lazarus from here where it's safe? I must go, Jesus answered. Lazarus has fallen asleep and I must wake him. Mary and Martha sat by their brother's bed, sobbing. I can't believe Lazarus is really gone, Mary cried. Neither can I, Martha said. Then she blew her nose loudly. <laughs> but I guess we'll have to accept that our brother has died. Mary, if you'll help the servants prepare his body, I'll go tell our friends. Jesus finally reached Judea four days after Lazarus had died. Lord, Martha said, if you had been there, my brother wouldn't have died. Then she added in a softer voice, but I know that even now God will give you anything you ask. 
Jesus stood very still. Martha, he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will have life even if he dies. And he who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Oh, yes, Martha answered. I do believe. Tears filled his eyes when he saw how sad everyone was. Lead me to the tomb, he said. Jesus ordered that the tomb be opened. But Martha said, Ah, Lazarus has been in there for four days. He'll be stinky. Do you believe or don't you? Jesus asked. I believe, said Martha, and the tomb was opened. Jesus prayed in a loud voice. Father, thank you for hearing me. I know you always hear me, but I speak loudly now so the people around me may hear and believe that you sent me. Then Jesus called out, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus obeyed, still wrapped in his burial clothes. Amazing. Jesus was trying to show people that he was more than just a teacher and a healer. He has power over death. Jesus told Mary and Martha that he is the resurrection and the life. And never are these words more comforting to Jesus followers than a time when someone in your family may have been lost. Jesus makes it possible for people to find new life and hope, even in the midst of trials and hopelessness. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thanks for being with us always and for giving us um, life and, and hope for our future, that you promised us resurrection and life forever. And thanks for being with us during such stressful and challenging times and that you give us your amazing comfort. In your name, amen. So now what I'd like to do is move into our prayer time. You know, there's just a lot going on in our world right now. Every day is fluid. Every hour is fluid. And, and you see right now that the cases in Iowa continue to grow where I think we're at 44 as of yesterday. And uh, we're really blessed to live in the, in the heartland of the country where I think we're minimized by some of this, but yet it's still out there. And so we need to follow all the precautions that they're telling us from the CDC, the Iowa Health Department, uh, about washing hands and doing everything else. So please be very attentive to that. Uh, we want to also know that, that there are so many of you that are living by yourselves. And uh, we have buddied up as well with uh, people of our church that will be checking or uh, placing phone calls and calling you and checking on you. And if you need anything, uh, let them know. They're going to let the church know and we'll get it out to you. Prescriptions, groceries, those type of things. We're here to help. So in that, I, I, I just want you to know that the word of God, the scripture, this, this is what we're talking about today, brings us hope, not despair. It brings us joy, not anxiety. And there is just so much that we get focused on. So my recommendation before we start in prayer here is just turn off your TV once in a while. Turn off the news and put on a game show. Uh, put on a video and, and, and find one that's a comedy that you like to give you some laughter and, and just to take you away from the circumstances that are right now that we have to deal with. So as we go to prayer, I just ask you to close your eyes, open your heart and your mind to Jesus. So let's pray. Almighty God, I thank you for all that you do. You are always with us, no matter what. You continue through this process with this virus that we continue to hear so much about. There are loved ones, neighbors, uh, acquaintances that we hear from that it could be affected. And, and so, Father, we're trying to deal with the best way we can with this. Father, help us to listen and be obedient to our leaders. Help us to, to not go out where we're not, not needed, not go unnecessary unless it is necessary. Father, today we want to pray for our country and its leaders. We want to pray for our states and their leadership and our counties and our cities, our mayors and, and everybody that's taking part in this, Lord. Lord, you have said that, that you are more ready to listen than we are to pray. And so we're here praying, Lord, that you would move mightily in our communities, in our nation, and, and particularly this with our, 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 the whole world, our brothers and sisters that are suffering. Be with the families who have lost loved ones through this. Be with those who are, who are separated from their loved ones and let them know that you are there. Lord, bring comfort through your Holy Spirit to fill the homes with you. 
Help us to see you with our spiritual eyes and heart. Open ourselves to see you revealed to us and that 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 peace that passes all understanding that your word talks about is in every home. That we don't uh, uh, bend into fear, that we don't go to anxiety, that we don't go into worry. Because your word says worry has enough uh, of its own tomorrow, so let's just focus on today. I thank you for our congregation, particularly, Lord. I thank you for all those who are listening that are not part of our congregation. Lord, would you bless them and bring them peace right now. Bring them that hope through the cross that we know Jesus died for us, that we might have life. God, we thank you that you are in the midst of all this and you make everything good, even the bad things. So, Lord, we just watch you move throughout this. And we thank you that uh, you are going in front of us. So, Father, we, we give you the praise and glory through this. And now, if you would, and, and your families, just repeat the Lord's Prayer with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you and may peace be with you. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Pastor Andrew Happ, and it is, uh, it is a pleasure to be here this morning to share God's good news and His Word with you. And uh, I, I would like for us to begin this morning in, in a word of prayer. Um, and, and before we do that, I want to invite you to please pull out your Bibles. We're going to be in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 11, this morning, uh, spending time uh, focusing on the uncertainty of life and the certainty that's made in Christ. So I, I want to begin this morning as I've been deep in prayer this past week, uh, like many of you. I, I came across an old prayer in our uh, United Methodist hymnal. Um, it's number 460, and it's um, out of the glory of God, and it's by Georgia Harkness. And I'm going to read this prayer, and I want to invite you to uh, join me uh, as I read this. I'm, I changed a few words to, to fit the context of where we're at, but um, I, I really hope that this moves through you. Let's pray. O God, who forgives our sins and heals our diseases, we cry out to you. Our strength has been brought low, and we do not know what the future holds. In our bodies there is pain, in our souls anxiety and unrest. It may be, if it may be, restore us to health, and if in order, in the order of nature, our sufferings of this virus must continue, Lord, we ask that you help us accept it without rebellion to you or our neighbor. If we are led toward the valley of the shadow, help us fear no evil, but to go bravely into your presence. In your good keeping, all is well. Into your hands, we give our bodies and our spirit. Do with us as you will. Amen. This morning as we gather together in a time of history where everything seems uh, to be put on hold, all the important things of our lives are set on a hold. The reality is that this isn't a hold on life, but a momentary rerouting of how we are going to engage and how we are going to live in this world around us. Like many of you, I've been deep in prayer this past week and the uh, previous days of this virus epidemic that we're facing as a world. The prayer we just prayed is not only fitting for us today, but is as the day it was written, but also for the scripture that we're about to read in the Gospel of John, chapter 11. The importance of what we are about to read and about to talk about is what happens with Jesus bringing Lazarus back to life, as Brenda so kindly led us through that message, the children's time. This is the ultimate messianic sign revealing to us that Jesus is life and resurrection, and if we have that promise, nothing, even a virus such as this, won't be able to take that away. This account of Lazarus is only recorded in John's Gospel, and it lays out the importance of who Jesus is and the foreshadow of the resurrection that is to come for all who believe in Jesus. 
I want to start by reading verses 1 through 3. Again, we're in chapter 11. It says this, A man named Lazarus was sick. He lived in Bethany with his sisters Mary and Martha. And this is Mary who later poured expensive perfume on the Lord's feet and wiped them with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was sick, so the two sisters sent a message to Jesus telling him, Lord, your dear friend is very sick. John's describing these three siblings here and the friendship that they have with Jesus. And we're brought into this friendship with a deep description of Mary, who anoints Jesus' feet uh, in chapter 12. So John's getting a little ahead of us here, but he's describing who Mary is. And then we're also revealed who Lazarus is. He's sick. To this point, Martha is not described in any other way other than sending a message with her sister to Jesus. Now in verse 4, let's pick back up. It says this, But when Jesus heard about it, he said, Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. I want to read that again. Lazarus' sickness will not end in death. And Jesus goes on to say this, No, it happened for the glory of God so that the Son of God will receive the glory from this. So although Jesus loved Martha, Mary, and Lazarus, He stayed where he was for the next two days. Finally, he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judea. Now, the first response we receive from Jesus is that Lazarus' sickness won't end in death. We're not given the full details of what was wrong with Lazarus, what kind of sickness he had. It wasn't named. It wasn't given a face. All All that we know is that Lazarus was sick and death was near. I want you to think about this kind of response in the light of today's epidemic. This is the kind of hope and truth that only God can provide. Jesus then said something that I think we really need to dig into and explore. He says, no, this happened for the glory of God, so the Son of God will receive glory from this. Now what Jesus says here sheds light on who he is and what takes place next. I think that this is uh, something that we really struggle with, and it's this. It's a question that many of us have. If God is all good and is in complete control of everything, why do bad things happen? Now, this is called the great theodicy question, and many, many people have this question, and sometimes they even let this question overwhelm themselves and, and fill up in their lives that they don't even go any further. They just have doubt, they have disbelief, and they don't even believe that God exists because of the world we live in, the things that we face on a daily basis. So let's break this down. If God is all good and if God is all powerful, why would God allow this virus to happen? Bad things don't just happen to happen. Horrible things happened all throughout the Bible just like they do today. And what matters is how we respond in those moments. Now, I want to point out three specific places of God's good creation in our response. Genesis, John, uh, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and specifically Romans, chapter 1. God created everything, and everything around us is a witness to God. However, people take what God has made and worship that as if it was God himself. God's not going to force his hand upon us to make us acknowledge him or want to have a relationship with him. That is a one-way street, a dictatorship that we, we wouldn't have a choice. But God gives us a choice. God gives us the choice that during bad things such as this virus right now, we have a response. Now, what we read right here in John is not that God was the one who made Lazarus sick. I hope you caught that. Lazarus isn't sick because God made him sick. God worked through this illness to bring glory through his son, Jesus Christ. And we can't live our lives like we're not held accountable. When things turn bad and we point a finger at God saying it's all your fault. We're created with the free will choice. We're in a a broken world. We'll either choose God or ourselves and our way of thinking. Jesus makes that plain throughout his life and ministry. Lay down your life and pick up your cross. What is your life if you gain the whole world but lose your soul? Jesus doesn't say that Lazarus is going to die by God's hand. He says out of his death, glory will be brought to God and the Son of God will receive glory. 
God moves in the sickness and death we face each day of our lives. Now we must remember that all of this is taking place here in the Gospel of John. Chapter 11, Jesus, Lazarus, Mary, Martha. All of this started in the beginning of John. Jesus is at a wedding in Cana of Galilee with his disciples and they run out of wine. And Jesus' mother says, Jesus, help. And this is my paraphrase, obviously. And Jesus says, it is not yet my time. And what he was meaning by that is it is not his time to reveal who he is and what he was about to do. But here, right here in John chapter 11, in this moment with this family, the time has come. The time has come for Jesus to reveal who he is as the son of God, that he is life, that he is resurrection, and that no matter what we face, it isn't the end if we have Christ. Now, I want us to think about this. Jesus' life and ministry with his disciples and the first sign, the first miracle that he was asked to do was at a wedding. And the final sign that Jesus gives is at a funeral. Think about that contrast of a beginning and the end. But as we're going to read on, this isn't the end. Jesus saying this will bring glory to the Son of God shows us that this time is Jesus' time to, in fact, reveal who he is. Jesus had left this area because the religious leaders were trying to find a way to capture Jesus because there was growing attention. People were believing in who he was and, and that Jesus actually was who he said he was. It isn't until this point that Lazarus is sick that Jesus says to his disciples, we're going back. What this signals is the love of a friendship and that God knew that he was going to save Lazarus and was entering his own death sentence. So let's think about that for a second. Jesus was away from Jerusalem because the religious leaders wanted to capture Jesus for the growing attention. But now, as this message from Martha and Mary is sent to Jesus, Jesus is pondering, he's waiting for two days where he's at before he comes back. And he comes to a point of saying, let's go. And the emphasis here is that Jesus is not only going to save Lazarus, he's not only going to reveal himself to all the people there and Martha and Mary, but Jesus is ultimately entering his own death sentence. I want to pick back up in verse 17. When Jesus arrived at Bethany, he was told that Lazarus had already been in the grave for four days. Bethany was only a few miles down the road from Jerusalem, and many of the people had come to console Martha and Mary in their loss. When Martha got the word that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you only had been here, my brother would would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. Martha went to meet him. She made a bold statement. Lord, if you'd only been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that God will give you whatever you ask. How many times in our lives have we cried that out? Lord, if you'd only been here, then this wouldn't have happened. Martha could have stopped at that saying, Lord, if you'd only been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But she could have boasted in her anger and her grief and her frustration and her frustration towards God. And that's typically what we do. We want to say, oh my gosh, all this stuff is happening around us. God, if you would only be here. Martha doesn't stop, but reveals her faith and trust in God. That even though her brother has died, she knows that God will give Jesus anything he asks. In verse 23, Jesus picks up and he said, Jesus told her, your brother will rise again. Yes, Martha said, he will rise when everyone else rises at the last day. Verse 25, listen to this. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live, even after dying. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this, Martha? Yes, Lord, she told him. I have always believed that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one who has come into the world from God. Then she returned to Mary. 
She called Mary aside from all the mourners and told her, the teacher is here and he wants to see you. So Mary immediately went to him. Jesus stayed on the outside of the village at the place where Martha had met him. When the people who were at the house consoling Mary saw her leave so hastily, they assumed she was going to Lazarus' grave to weep, so they followed her there. When Mary arrived and saw Jesus, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you'd only been here, my brother would not have died. I notice Mary doesn't go that step further in saying, I know now that God will give you whatever you ask. She says, Lord, if you'd only been here, my brother would not have died. Listen to this. When Jesus saw her weeping and saw the people wailing with her, a deep anger welled up within him, and he was deeply troubled. Now, in the Greek, it tells us that it was his spirit that was deeply troubled, that he was angry. And he says, where have you put him? They told him, Lord, come see. Then Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, how, see how much he loved him? But some said, the man healed a blind man. Couldn't he have kept Lazarus from dying? Jesus was still angry as he arrived at the tomb. A cave with a stone rolled across the entrance. Roll the stone aside, Jesus told them. But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he's been dead for four days. The smell will be terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of all these people standing here so that they will believe you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. And the dead man came out, his hands and feet bound in grave cloths, his face wrapped in, he in a head cloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Now, if anyone has any question of whether God has a cure for this virus, I want to say this. If it's not a virus like this one, it will be something else. Every single day of our lives, we face death. Now, I'm not trying to bring you down, but this is the reality of the lives we live. Our world is broken. Now, I love my wife, my two girls so much that I would do anything for them, but I cannot save them. And they cannot save me. There's only one who can save, and that's Jesus Christ. So yes, Jesus is the cure for this virus. Verse 26, everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this? Let me say that again. Everyone who lives in me and believes in me will never, ever die. Do you believe this? Do you? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is who he says he is? That he is the savior of this world? That even in the midst of a virus, even in the midst of an epidemic, even in the midst of quarantine, that Jesus is Lord and Savior. This isn't it. This isn't the end. The story ends with Jesus saying, unwrap him and let him go. And then it moves directly into a moment where the Pharisees are going to arrest Jesus. And we don't know what happened next other than the people that were there that came to console Martha and Mary believed in what they would saw. Today we have their testimony and witness to what Jesus did for this family. We only hear about Lazarus one more time, and that's in John chapter 12, verse 10, where the Pharisees are trying to kill Lazarus because Jesus raised him from the dead, and all these people are believing in Jesus Christ because Lazarus is alive. That's all, all we hear. This great escalation, this great buildup. But the glory is for God. The glory is for God. In all actuality, Lazarus back from the dead probably would have gone on to lead a life telling others about what Jesus had done for him. And we don't know this, Scripture doesn't tell us, but there's a high probability that Lazarus died again. All those people who were there to help Martha and Mary mourn the death of their brother received something they could never return. 
they witness Jesus Christ give his final sign of who he is, the Son of God, life and resurrection. Martha found the cure to life in Jesus Christ himself. That same cure is for you and me. If you've never taken this cure into your life and want to right now, I want to invite you to repeat these words after me. Lord, I realize that I'm broken and I am a sinful person. And God, I ask you to forgive me, to come into my life, to lead me, and to be my Lord and Savior. Now, if you just made that choice right now, if you just spoke words like that, I want you to know that we rejoice with you and we'd like to talk to you more about that choice that you just made. But that's not the end because I have a message here for those of you who have already entrusted your life to our Lord and Savior. I want to ask you how you're sharing this good news of Jesus Christ with somebody else today. Because I want us to think about this seriously. If you had a cure for this virus and withheld it from other people, that would be evil because people's lives are at risk. But you as a Christian, you do have a cure. You have a cure for this virus. You have a cure for every single thing that we face in life. How are you sharing that with other people? Don't withhold it from someone. And I'm telling you right now, the honesty in my heart, I do not want to hear people say, you know, we're quarantined. We can't tell other people about Jesus Christ. Well, guess what? That's why we're doing what we're doing right now on social media. We're going live to share the gospel of Jesus Christ because this world needs it. No longer in our world are we able to hide behind the things in our lives. Think about this for a moment. Everything is being shut down. All the things being placed on hold. And as I spoke in the beginning, there's a rerouting of things. You can't hide behind your money. You can't hide behind the physical things that you buy at the store. You can't. The reality of our mortality is being made real. If there's never been an opportunity in your life where you've seen or witnessed the, the chance to, to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, right now is the time. But again, God's not going to force His hand upon us. He's not going to make us choose by forcing something on us. He wants us to freely choose Him. He wants us to realize that in our lives, there's an opportunity to receive the cure, a hope, an anchor for our souls, which is in Jesus Christ, His Son, and our Lord and Savior. Will you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you that even in the midst of our world today, you're speaking hope, you speak life, you speak eternity. Lord, I thank you that even in the midst of this family of Lazarus, Martha, and Mary, you teach us how we should respond and how we should act as we should always turn to you. And Lord, that we shouldn't doubt, but that we should trust and place our faith that you're doing something good even in the midst of all the bad that's happening. And we know, Lord, we know that you've told us, you've shown us time and time again that this is not our final resting place. This is not our forever home. You reveal to us where that lies. That lies in a relationship with you. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you will do. And I just pray right now that, Lord, you would impress this message, you would impress this chapter of the Gospel of John upon our hearts, that we would meditate upon it, that we would take this in and, and apply it to our lives to answer that question. Do we believe that Jesus is who he says he is? Life and resurrection. Jesus, it's in your holy and precious name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we just want to thank you again so much for joining us today. And uh, as Pastor Mike had talked in the beginning, we want to invite you to stay tuned with our Facebook page and emails and uh, other out outlets of social media. 
Um, we're going to be taking some steps in Instagram, and, and we're step by step taking uh, more um, opportunities to engage with you via technology. And so uh, we love you, and we know that God is uh, moving in your lives. And so with that being said, you know what to do. Go and share that good news of Jesus Christ with those you know. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.